I want to bring in now Sarah Azari to discuss. Uh, she is a criminal defense attorney and she joins me live from Los Angeles. So good to see you, Sarah. Good so, to see you too, Fred. Yeah, so Amber Heard's testimony this week, I mean, it was quite striking. Um, how do you interpret what was said on the stand? So, you know, Fred, domestic violence is uh, a deadly epidemic, you know, obviously. It's horrific. What she's describing in graphic detail is awful. But in a court of law, we look for the truth. We look for credibility. We look for corroboration. And her testimony has been largely implausible. Um, yeah. I don't impose... Well, look, I'm not, I'm not saying that victims of domestic violence need to gather proof and take photographs of all their injuries, but this is a person who is very well documenting and photographing the chaos around her, the broken objects, the video, you know, vi videoing uh, Johnny Depp in his kitchen slamming cabinets, but yet she does not take any photos of some very, very serious injuries, not just little marks on her face, but cuts, you know, things, you know, the broken nose, the broken ribs, and she's someone, Fred, who is surrounded by nurses and doctors and other witnesses who have testified that they saw no marks of abuse on her ever following these incidents that she's alleging. Um, then you look at the added facts over time. When you start elaborating and exaggerating, the facts become more detailed. That usually shows fabrication on some level. And last but not least, she has very selective memory. The facts that are bad for her, she says she doesn't know, she doesn't recall, and yet she recalls the type of flooring that she was dragged across after being sucked Actually assaulted. It's it's really, you know, a credibility call for this jury, mm -hmm. but I would say between her and Depp, Depp is the one that's more credible and likable. And and you know, in a court of law, as you know, Fred, if if the jury likes you, they will believe you. If they don't like you, you better have some strong corroboration. Wow, but in her defense, uh, can't sometimes trauma interrupt your memory of things? Yes, absolutely. And we had experts testifying to that, or at least her expert, her hired gun, Dr. Hughes, testified before mm -hmm. she testified. Uh, but again, you look at the totality, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you give her that. You say, okay, fine, you don't remember. But then why is it that you remember other things that are irrelevant, mm -hmm. you know, but you don't remember, you know, and, and, and then you look at you know, the, the lack of photographs. La you know, some of these injuries, uh, Fred, she absolutely would have landed in the hospital for. Non-option. It's not whether you're, you know, oh, no, I don't want to go to the hospital, like some victims do say. It's that she would have been bleeding. <laughs> you know, she would she would not have a choice but to be taken to the hospital. So, again, it, it, there's an implausibility here that I just can't overlook. And she's just not as relatable as Depp was in his testimony. Hmm. So, as a defense attorney, how would you prepare your client for uh, a moment like this? Well, you know, I think when you are telling the truth, uh, obviously your lawyer will prepare you and you are prepared for anything that comes at you on cross-examination. Um, if you are putting together facts in a story, then it's tough because there, there might be questions asked of you in, on cross, and her cross is going to be brutal, I imagine, mm. um, that you just, you just cannot prepare for. And ultimately, Fred, you know, I want to bring this back to the veracity of the 2018 op-ed, because that's why we're here, right? right? We know that, let's just say this jury believes her they must have absolutely also believed Depp because he definitely had the more credible case. So now you have two perpetrators. Her op-ed is written as a first, you know, person, me too victim uh, point of view. So is it truthful to say that you are a victim of domestic violence when at least on some occasions you've been the perpetrator? I mean, to me, that's deceptive. It's a half-truth, and a half-truth is a lie, which makes it defamatory. Hmm. Uh, you mentioned the, the cross-examination just might be brutal. We, we know that a spokesperson for Johnny Depp has said that when they cross-examine, uh, it will highlight the many fallacies that she has testified to. At the same time, um, might it potentially backfire if, if cross-examination is too tough? Yes. I mean, you know, sometimes when lawyers get snarky and they get personal and they get really sort of hostile, it doesn't look good before a jury. But sometimes the witness is the one that gets hostile in response because she or he is not prepared uh, for that question. And so 
I, you know, it, this will be really interesting. I keep saying a first-year law student could do this cross-examination and unravel this mm. testimony. There is just so much, Fred, that she can be impeached with. There's so much we've heard in the last three weeks that, that is contrary to what she's saying. And I'm also curious about the other witnesses that she's going to put up. Are they going to change the trajectory of this case for her in some way? All right, we'll all be watching. Sarah Azari, good to see you. So glad you could join us today. Thank you, Fred, for having me, finally. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for saying yes, right? All right. <laughs>